Hey guys, Luke here for Valley Community Hospital. Today we're going to go over the operation of the Life Pack 20E, the defibrillators that we use here at the hospital. So let's go ahead and jump into this. All right, so this is the Life Pack 20E. This is the hospital version of the Life Pack 12 um, that Life Pack um, Physio Control put out. They are a very capable defibrillator. Uh, but they also do serve a um, cardiac monitoring function. Um, however, they do not have the functions of blood pressure, capno, or pulse ox that some of the other life pack monitors have. So these can operate in two different modes, AED mode and manual defibrillation mode. Generally in the hospital, we are going to use it in manual defibrillation mode because for the most part, those of us who are licensed personnel are ACLS trained and um, have it within our scope to do manual defibrillation. If, however, you somehow find yourself in a situation where nobody who's currently at that cardiac arrest is able to do manual defibrillation within their scope, I'm gonna show you how to do AED mode first because it's very easy. Okay, so now I currently have our cable plugged into a tester, but this cable right here, it comes out of this right hand side and it goes to this little connector here. This is what plugs into your pads, okay? The pads will be located on the top of the crash cart right next to the AED. And there are going to be four pads there, two of each size. Now, there are this one with the pink um, bar up here, the ones with the red bar here. They will say on them, adult or pediatric. They'll have a picture of a baby and a man with a line through it for the pediatrics. And they'll have a picture of a man and a baby with a line through it for the adult. Pick the right size, okay? Pediatric also has a specific weight amount on there. It's for use in zero to 15 kilograms. Once they're over 15 kilos, you use the adult, okay? Now, for placement on these pads, okay? It's going to show you the two different placement methods. Now, depending on what the physician wants will be which one you choose. A right here is the most common way to place them, and that is uh, just superior to the right pec, and then in the left axillary area, okay? Basically, you want it to be just upper right, patient's right, of the heart and just lower left of the heart. The other option is to go anterior posterior. This is my preferred placement because studies have shown that it gives a slight better increase to the amount of area it covers of the heart. And all you do is you find exactly where the heart would be on the patient and you put the pad right there on the front and on the back. Very simple. For your pediatrics, again, the preferred on pediatrics is front and back. If you have a large enough pediatric, you can place them both on the front like this. But generally on pediatrics, you're gonna go front and back. Okay, so the first thing you do when you want to use AED mode is turn it on. Very simple. It's going, analyze. It's gonna tell you to push analyze. If you push analyze. Analyzing now, stand clear. It's in AED mode already. Okay. Remove test plug. Now it's saying remove test plug because I have the test plug in there and it can't analyze a test plug, okay? But what it will do, it'll analyze. You'll see that there's a clock up here. You can use that in order to time everything. It will remind you every two minutes to check a rhythm. Remove test plug. You'll click analyze. It'll say shock recommended, shock not recommended. If it recommends a shock, you clear the patient and this button right here is your shock button. Now, the shock button, you don't just push it, 
you have to push it and hold it for just a split Remove second. Test plug. Okay? Now, that's AED mode. That That's it. That's all you have to do. Okay? If, uh, like most of the time, you want to not use AED mode, there's this gray thing right here that says manual. You push that Remove in. Remove test plug. And you open it up. Okay? Now, I'm going to remove the test plug so that it will stop yelling at me. Connect electrodes. So it's going to want you to connect electrodes. This thing is very smart. It knows when it's plugged in. It knows when it's connected to the patient. Okay? So let's go through all of the operations on this real quick. Okay? You have your energy select up and down. Okay? When you push it, it will bring up this. Now, you have two options. You can either go through it in increments of 25 okay you can also use this dial here to go through okay so say 300 okay and this is a biphasic not a monophasic okay the general consensus is 200 300 360 and then 360 all the way through through to the end of the code. Um, and then you have your charge button. Once you push the charge button, it will charge. It takes time to charge. Continue CPR while it charges, okay? And in fact, my recommendation and the way that I've done it in previous agencies is to charge it, then do a rhythm check once it's already charged. Because then, when you see whether it's a shockable rhythm or not, you just immediately hit the shock button because you've already got it charged, everybody's already clear for the rhythm check. You That way we don't waste any time that could be done with compressions, okay? So, once it is charged and you push the shock button, it'll shock. Again, you have to hold that shock button for a split second, okay? If it is charged and you don't want to shock, Okay. It's very easy to dump the charge without shocking the patient. You click the big dial right here. Just click it. That will disperse the um, charge without shocking the patient. Easy, simple. Okay. So let's keep going down. Next we have our sync button. This is for your synchronized cardio version of um, unstable tachycardias, okay? So your SVTs, VTAC with a pulse, torsades, AFib, anything where you're sinking, where the patient is still alive, okay? If the patient's dead, you defibrillate. D, dead, defibrillate, okay? If they have a pulse, you synchronize, okay? Um, when you click the synchronize button, this uh, light will light up right here. And then on your screen, you'll see it will have a little arrow on top of each of the QRSs. That's how you know it's synchronized. Then you can charge and deliver your synchronized cardio version. Okay. Next, we have this green section here. All four of these buttons with the green background are for your pacer, okay? So in order to turn it on, you click the pacer button. It's gonna yell at me because I don't have the electrodes connected to anything. You pick your rate, okay? You pick your current amount, and then you have a pause button. It's very easy. It's pretty hard to, to mess up these monitors, okay? So let's go through some of the other buttons that do some support functions. We have the lead button, okay? When you click that lead button, it asks, it, it allows you to choose what is actually showing on the screen here. And it's beeping because none of these are actually connected. Now this lead button is quite important because when you first turn on the monitor, it's going to be trying to look at the three lead specifically lead two, um, which is your left leg and right arm leads. 
If, though, you don't have the three lead on them, and you only have the pads on them, you need to change this lead to paddles, okay? Um, very easy to do. Again, you just push lead, you use your knob to go over to paddles, and you click. Done, okay? Size you're not going to use very much. That zooms in on the waveform. Occasionally, it'll be used to determine rhythms, like AFib, you can zoom in to see if there's P waves. It's rarely used. Alarms, this is how you silence alarms right here. It also allows you to suspend alarms and whatnot. So right now you can see the VFib VTAC alarm is off. You would probably want to turn that on if it's somebody that say you just got back in an arrest. Okay, now our monitors in the ER will also tell you when they go into VFib VTAC, but I'm gonna be honest, these life packs are better at determining VFib VTAC than our Fukita monitors are, way better. Um, that's one of the reasons that life pack is as prominent in the industry as they are, because they are very good at that kind of stuff. You have the options button. This just takes you into some extra stuff that you're really not gonna need to use very much, except twice a year, there's the date and time. <laughs> that's how you change it. Uh, in fact, this one is, oh, it is actually correct. Okay. Uh, this is also where you find user test. This is the user test that we do once a day on these monitors. Very easy to find. This is also where you can go in here and print a code summary. Okay, you can change it. Uh, it looks like the only report we have currently programmed is code summary. Um, of the monitor, you can do that and you can click print and it will actually print off a rhythm strip before and after every shock that you delivered, okay? Uh, the only other option you you might use is going to be to go into your archives and it will end your monitoring and take you into the archives. You can go in here and you can print a previous patient. So you can see this eight and seven o'clock ones. These are um, user tests. This noon one is probably an arrest. So if I needed to print out a summary of that arrest, you know, days or even just hours later, I, I could by going in here, selecting it and clicking print, okay? In order to exit archives, the only way to get out of it is to turn off the monitor and back on. Connect electrodes. Okay. Uh, so when you turn it back on, it starts in AED mode. In order to undo that, you need to close and reopen that door. Uh, okay, the only other two buttons you have are print and code summary. Print prints a continuous strip of your rhythm. This is super handy when you're doing something like say uh, adenosine, you're doing a chemical cardioversion you press print right about the time that you push the adenosine and you'd get a strip of exactly what happens. And to stop it, you have to press print again. Prints out the side here on the paper. Now, pressing code summary will print the code summary of the current patient encounter. This will print out everything that it knows. It'll tell you the time the monitor was turned on, every time it was charged, every time it shocked the pacer, the settings, everything. Um, and then we have a home button. This just takes you back to the home page. So if I'm here in options somewhere, I can just hit this home button. It takes me back here. It's just a nice quick way to get here if you need to. And then we have this event button. Now, event is interesting, okay? It can be used very well to log things that happened, okay? So what you do is you press event, it will note the time that you actually pressed it, but it will give you a chance to then go in here and select things. So let's say our innovation occurred, boom. It logs the time and when I print that code summary later, it will tell me what time the innovation was logged, okay? 
I can go in here and you can see it's got some other stuff. It's got generic, in case there's something that isn't in here, CPR, dopamine, epinephrine, innovation, bicarb, atropine, aspirin, adenosine. There's also a more tab. We've got IV, lidocaine, morphine, nitro, oxygen, uh, streptokinase, TPA, transport, and urokinase. Okay. And then previous page. So again, you can use this to log things. Uh, there's also a quick way to log things. If you don't want to have to go through and actually find what you want, if you press event twice, it will just log a generic at that time. Super easy, super simple. Um, all right, and then you do have two, uh, well, yeah, you have two lights down here, one for AC main and one for service. AC mains you want to be lit up. That means that it is currently plugged in. Now these do have a battery in them. Uh, you can see right here, our battery is full. They will last for some time. So if for instance, you needed to take a patient to CT, you can take this with you. Uh, and then you have a service button, uh, service light. If that is on, that means that the monitor is detecting something wrong in itself a short or something, and it needs to be serviced, you need to let IT or uh, biomed know immediately if that is the case.